Okay, something tremendous happened, and I have to share, because I have gone a couple of days without doing my little uh, Black History Month tributes. So, um, I just got back from a lecture that was done by the LeVar Burton. And I gotta tell you, um, after listening to his message, there's a story I need to tell, but let me go ahead and say that, you know, I, I, where I work is at a university and they were able to bring him in as a part of a distinguished lecture series. And so, uh, first of all, phenomenal performer. I knew that already, but phenomenal performer. Um, it, it wasn't so much a lecture as it, as he said, uh, was more of a performance, uh, uh, piece. And so, you know, here it is. Um, I managed to get away with, of course, my uh, signed autographs, everything, to commemorate this moment. And um, also just very, uh, very kind to stay after uh, he'd done his lecture and allow us all to stand up there and do our thing. In fact, I got to uh, speak with him. And of course, I walk up and say, I'm trying very hard not to be a fangirl. It was the truth. Um, so let me go ahead and tell uh, the story and uh, how his story helped me to feel like it's time for me to share this story. Um, and during his uh, talk tonight, he led off asking who in the room had ever heard of raisin in the oatmeal um, as an expression. And of course, I raised my hand, but then I put it down kind of quick because, I mean... I live in West Texas, so <laughs> I figured this is a key part of how he's going to uh, do his icebreaker for the talk. And um, so he goes on to explain that he grew up and very much in the communities uh, where he was growing up, he tended to find himself the only uh, black kid in the group. I relate to that. I um, was born in Savannah, Georgia. Uh and Savannah is Savannah. <laughs> uh, it's in the south, uh, on the on coastal Georgia, uh, on the coast of Georgia, and uh, I I had a very uh, happy uh, childhood period. Okay, all the way across the board, loving family, very supportive, everything. Uh, but Savannah uh, was and continues to be, in all honesty, uh, a fairly segregated town. Um, not by law, I think, just by the way things are done. It is a very southern city. And when I was a young child, I didn't really, I wasn't really aware a lot of um, the world outside of my family. I came from a, my, my uh, nuclear family was me and my mom, uh, my dad, and my younger brother. But we were part of a larger <laughs> extended family of tons of aunts and uncles and cousins and all this other kind of thing. Many of us went to church together. You know, we were very, I viewed that as my nuclear family. Uh, and then at the ripe old of eight, uh, right, ripe old, old age of eight. Wow. It's getting late. Um, my family for a number of reasons, uh, elected to relocate to Coralville, Iowa, a suburb of Iowa city, Iowa, uh, the home of the university of Iowa in Eastern Iowa. Um, at the time that we moved to Iowa, just to give you some perspective, um, in 1988, the statewide population of African Americans in the state of Iowa, the statewide population was 1% of the total population. We literally knew every single family that was black in our town. There weren't many. Uh, some of them, we are still friends on Facebook, so I imagine when they see this, they're going to be like, ah! <laughs> And um, getting back to uh, what uh, LeVar Burton said that spurred me to uh, share a story, uh, that I'm getting to, I promise, uh, was that I went from a very uh, familiar and comfortable environment where I saw lots of people who uh, I felt looked like me and shared an experience, uh, a life experience that I did. Again, I was eight. Um, to a place where when I walked in for the first day of class, I had a, a slightly different experience than what he shared tonight. He shared that he walked into his classroom um, as a minority and everyone cheered. And a short, short version of it is that um, they made an automatic assumption that because he was black, he was going to uh, be very talented at baseball. And uh, they found that was not the case uh, <laughs> when it came down to it. And he says he still kind of bears a little bit of uh, uh, toward the game of baseball. Well, when I walked in to the first day of uh, third grade at Corville Central Elementary, which is a wonderful school, um, I've been back <laughs> since then. And it's kind of amazing to reflect on that time. Um, 
wonderful school. Uh, my principal was uh, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, wow, I still remember that. Uh, wonderful teachers that I had there. But when I walked in to that third grade classroom, um, there was a lot of noise before I got there. And then when I hit the room and they saw me, it went dead quiet. Um, and that was the moment in my life when I realized that I was now an other. And that was rough <laughs> for me. Um, I mentioned that I had a, I have a younger brother. Um, in my family, we span the rainbow uh, in melanin concentrations, <laughs> I guess I would say. And uh, my brother uh, is of a complexion that is what we call fair. Um, I'd never viewed myself as being dark-skinned, uh, but when we moved to Iowa, I became dark-skinned because it was what they were used to. I have people in my family who have uh, much deeper uh, and beautiful hues and tones um, um, that tend toward the darker uh, skin colors. Um, and, I, and in my family, that was never... It was never a thing. Um, if you were ever to even fashion your mind around the idea of degrading someone because of their melanin concentration or skin color, I mean, there was going to be a serious consequence for that. So we just, we, we were family. We didn't, we didn't think about things in that way. Um, and, um, I mean, <laughs> learning that you're other at the age of eight, you're in third grade, can be tough. Um, and it has shaped me um, and my view of the world. Uh, clearly, I've survived that experience, but I felt like as I reflect on Black History Month in a different way this year, uh, that sometimes I might recite something, as I have a couple times uh, for you guys who have watched already. Uh, sometimes I may just share uh, a story about America and Americans, because I am an American. I am a citizen of the United States, these United States of America, um, with the right to every privilege that comes along with that citizenship. Um, that does not mean that I do not encounter uh, challenges to accessing uh, all of those rights and privileges. Um, it does mean that I educate myself about them and that I constantly am vigilant at trying to make sure that not only am I crusading for mine, but that I am looking out for others who may be coming up to uh, similar and sometimes different challenges to their inalienable rights um, as citizens of this country and those who wish to um, walk a pathway towards citizenship in this country. I'm very passionate about those issues. Um, so I thought I'd just share a little bit about that uh, experience because it, it really touched me uh, tonight that he was able to share that. And he and I are not isolated incidents. Um, I know that when I was in uh, undergrad at Tougaloo College, I was moved in my senior thesis to write something called an American Identity Crisis. And it was talking about uh, W.E.B. Du Bois' uh, uh, concept of the double consciousness, where um, African Americans exist uh, with a kind of split personality. We, we have to live in both of these worlds and constantly be aware of ourselves as members of this American society, but also African Americans who, by design, were never originally considered to be full persons um, in the design of this country, but through a number of different measures um, have worked to that place. Um, and And the unique issues and challenges that we face um, generations later <laughs> after the laws <laughs> have, been, have been adjusted to uh, ensure that we are not denied uh, access to our rights. We still uh, wrestle with the sociological after effects of descending from a group of persons who came here and were not considered to be people at all and certainly not people deserving of respect and rights uh, and any kind of um, uh, say in what happened to them. So um, it has been a tremendous night. I am so very grateful for this experience. I have now officially met <laughs> two members of my Star Trek universe <laughs> in person. George Takei, thank you, uh, Clinton School. <laughs> public service because that happened when I was living in our uh, in Arkansas and now thank you Texas Tech because I have now met 
a member of the next generation. So here's to hoping that I get to meet some other folks too. Y'all seriously, Roots, to Reading Rainbow, to Star Trek, the entire catalog, and the director's uh, experience that this man has had. LeVar Burton is amazing. And I hope that you have a chance to go ahead and see him at some point too. Um, Cause that blessed me. And he let loose that his mama is a, a alum of Philander Smith College, one of my schools that I supported when I was working in Arkansas. And so I just, it's just fabulous. Just fabulous. Great night. So y'all go check out uh, his stuff. If you've never watched Star Trek Next Generation, go watch it. He's phenomenal. Um, if you have not watched Roots and you're African American, shame on you. Um, if you've not watched Roots and you're an American, shame on you. Go watch it. You need to. It's part of our history, our collective history. And uh, also Reading Rainbow, come on. Y'all, really? I'm pretty sure it's out on YouTube, like hundreds of episodes. Uh, but I'm going to go check on that and make sure because I told somebody that. I have seen it on somebody's streaming media somewhere. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs>